Welcome to the podcast. We have on a script summoner, Eric Rudnick. He's a writer and director. He just did a short. Uh, the short is called Hold You So Tight, which was actually, I think, placed at Script Summit at one point. So congratulations on that, Eric. Thanks so much. I appreciate it. So walk me through the story. Um, what brought you through to writing this and uh, getting it made with a charisma carpenter of all people, which is amazing. Can you believe that? What luck. Actually, what led me to writing this was I, in part of my life, am a producer for reality TV, or as sometimes okay. it's called, unscripted TV. Of all unscripted, things. yeah. Okay. So I was working on a show, and I'm a freelancer, so... I'll work on a show. Sometimes it's five months. Sometimes it's two weeks. So um, on this particular show, I was a challenge producer, meaning you come up with the competitions between uh, teams or between contestants. And gotcha. this was a very ambitious show that was executive produced by Ridley Scott's company, Scott Free. Oh, wow. And it was a thrill to be in his conference room and look at all the photos on the wall of his entire career. And then uh, we got down to the business of making the show and we were going to shoot a pilot and see how that went before we did any more episodes. So we shot it over two days uh, in Hawthorne, which is uh, kind of on the west side of uh, Los Angeles, a little out of the way okay. town. And I get there and the premise of the show is AI versus humans. And this was 200, 2016. Okay. Or 2017, actually. 2016 when we started working on it, 2017 when we got everybody together on set. And so onto the set for these two days comes a robot. And I had never seen anything like this before. It is unbelievably beautiful. It moves. And I found out later that um, the guy who was operating it, Alan Tim, is also the person who built it. Mm, okay and it just was it's like it was like being in the room with george clooney or with jessica chastain it was like a movie star i was like that robot yeah. is a movie star. that's amazing so then i just had to write the movie for that robot to star in so i did i wrote a feature um i got some great feedback some interest from a little bit of uh industry and then nothing so i was like well you're probably going to have to make this yourself if you want to see it. So yeah. I took the basic idea. I wrote a short version of it, um, found a great location, wrote it for that location, a 12 page script. And then um, everything started coming together. I had always, I had been in touch with the guys who brought the robot outside. It's Walter. It's uh, Alan and another guy, Walter who operated. And I brought them to, lunch and i just kept them on the phone for six years until everything kind of got in the right direction and then we got the script to charisma carpenter and she said yes and that's awesome. that was that's when we knew we were off to the races so yeah so this is a real robot yes i had no idea i i did not realize that you had like a real ai robot and that is so cool eric well, it is, and it's also the technology in that robot is now, you know, 10 years old or older, but when you see it, if you haven't seen it before, it just does, Alan says, it's, it does something to your lizard brain when you see this, <laughs> when you see it move, it's it, you don't expect it to, because you've seen it in movies, but when it does it on set, it's practical. It's a practical effect. In other words, we're not doing stuff in post, Yeah, you know, kind of you know, having puppeteers manipulate it, it right. moves because these guys have programmed it to move. That's so cool. <laughs> um, And I just have to ask, did that pilot take off for the show you were working on? It did not. Um, oh, that's it crazy. Never, never saw the light of day, but that happens a lot. Even at, even at that level, even with someone like Ridley Scott's name on the project, it's not any guarantee that it's ever going to be seen by anybody. So that was, I was also a valuable lesson to learn one of the many that I've learned yeah. since being out here in Los Angeles. 
So when you uh, saw this robot, you were inspired to write the the script. Um, Hold you so tight. That was that was initially a feature. What are you trying to um, like thematically discuss in the work? Well, it's funny because it's the same thing now as it was then, but only now it's all out in the open. So I was addressing loneliness because we live in a big city out, out here, but people are very separated from each other. You're in your car, you're in your office. Yeah. At the time you're in your office, now you're working from home. Um, you know, you're walking your dog, you're with your family, and you very seldom see people who aren't in your um, group of people that you've chosen. Wow. In New York, you're walking around where I lived for 10 years in Manhattan and you're walking around and you bump into people and, and you know, society is hitting up against you, whether you want it to or not, you're talking with people you might not agree with, you know, it's, it's, it's a much more public kind of way of living. And I missed that. Yeah. But, but since I wrote this film, you know, we've had a pandemic, mm -hmm. you know, 10 years ago, you might meet somebody on a dating app and you might meet that person, you know, at a bar and you might, you know, get some kind of uh, good vibe from them and you might hug them or you might reach out and touch them on the arm and say, hey, it's great to meet you. Right. Whereas now it's like, are you vaccinated? If not, why not? Who did you vote for? If, you know, it's like yeah. there are all these things that keep us from connecting with each other. Yeah. And I feel like um, while those things aren't directly uh, mentioned in the feature or in the short, I feel like it comes across because it also addresses uh, somewhat of a mental health crisis that we're having in this country. You know, I'm reading yeah, I think you're right. New, York New York Times headlines saying how, you know, people are lonely, suicides are up, and it's yeah. it's there's a real issue for people. And it doesn't matter who you are, where you come from, how much money you make, what your background is. Everybody is feeling this. And the movie kind of addresses that, I've been told, in a way that is a little more organic than just hitting those themes head on. I think it's it's really fascinating approach to it. Um, touch is so important to the human existence. And people really are more and more isolated. Um, I mean, like, I'm a hugger. But, you know, I know that other people are not huggers. So then I have to make sure I'm like, are you comfortable with this? And and that right there is 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 the right way to do it. But even that kind of a bump, it's like, well, why even bother trying to, you know, offer a hug at that point? Because I don't want to make someone uncomfortable by saying no. Um, and so then implementing an AI robot that can... Uh, satisfy that longing for touch is a fascinating approach and i thought that was really interesting thank you yeah i never saw the robot hug on set that's not what it was there to do um but when i as we spoke um over the years i said can can this thing hug can you program it to do that and they said yeah because that's in the that's the the only idea i ever had for it and i think it kind of plays with the idea of technology because I watch a lot of shorts and I watch a lot of uh, sci-fi shorts just to just to see what people are doing and mm -hmm. they're fascinating and everyone is different and I love what people are doing and I also noticed that seven or eight times out of ten the ending of a, of a sci-fi short is going to be a downer like an amazing <laughs> so twist same with horror amazing, movies yeah, it's and I was like, well, I that was never the point of this, but in doing that I realized that I was zigging where other people were zagging. Like yeah. I showed it to a workshop uh that I was taking and and this woman wrote in the comments, she said, uh, I wanted the robot to stab someone at the end. And I thought, that's interesting. I think I don't know if you wanted it, but you probably expected it. Because yeah. we've been trained to be like, oh, technology is bad. But I'm like, get, you're on this phone every single day, yeah. you know, scrolling and good news, bad news. And, you know, you're talking to Siri, you're talking to your Alexa. So it's in our lives. 
and we don't expect those things to go bad. So I yeah. just thought, well, this thing has got to be pure because that's the whole point of the movie. So I think people are waiting for something which is yeah. creates its own kind of tension. Yeah, I, I like the benevolence aspect of it a lot. Um, it's just... So I practice in my family uh, the 30-second hug. Are you are you familiar with the 30-second hug? No. All right. So the 30-second hug, it, it elicits a biochemical reaction in the brain. So like my kid, uh, you know, he's always confrontational. And so the, the theory was we're going to practice the 30-second hug. So what happens is when you hug someone, um, the first 10 seconds – uh, they're just like, okay, okay, it's a hug. It does not register or release dopamine in the brain. The next 10 seconds is fascinating. The next 10 seconds, um, they fight the hug. They want to leave the hug. They do the pat. They try and back away. They squirm. Um, but if you if you continue to hold the hug while they fight you, the last 10 seconds is the money. The last 10 seconds, the dopamine is released in the brain and the hug then has a cathartic effect on the person receiving the hug, which can elicit tears, joy, um, or just that soul connection you're looking for. And so that's what I was looking at with the robot giving, you know, Charisma Carpenter this long hug and her awesome um, uh, choices that she was making during that moment was great because, you know, you watch her go through that 30 second hug. And so, for anybody listening out there, you know, do that with your kids, do that with your spouse, and it will change your relationship. It really will. That sounds amazing. Um, I did not know about that, but I also uh, agree with you. Charisma is dynamite in this movie. I mean, she's been doing it professionally for over 30 years, and she brought so much heart and gra gravitas <laughs> I yeah, I want to say, yeah. and a skill, just like her acting chops are spot on. There was very little to do. She read the script, and uh, was one of the things I I most cherish about the experience is getting an actor who's been doing it that long and who's known and reading the her reading the script and telling our casting person, "I'll I feel like this," meaning she feels like the character feels, Aww. and I'll do it. So yeah. um, I love the, that kind of the scripted, what I think a script is supposed to do, not just tell a story, but get people on board just by them reading it. We never had a conversation, she and I, about will you do it? Will you not do it? Do you have any questions? She just read the script and said yes. I mean, and I love that. I mean, she's what a great get because I really feel like, yeah, everybody knows her from Buffy and she's done a bunch of guest stuff, but I feel like she's super underutilized as an actor. So I think it's great that um, you get to bring her on and show that, and she gets to show that side uh, uh, as a performance. So what's the goal? Are you looking at trying to roll into a feature eventually? Well, it's so funny that you say that because the feature's already written. So if somebody saw it, at, if we get into whatever festivals we get into and we're just mm -hmm. starting to enter now, uh, I would certainly love to make the feature version of this because it's already done it, it's it's a little bit the features a bit different mm -hmm. um but it still involves a robot that gives hugs that you have a session with um but also it works as a tv series also and the the tv series i keep coming back to that i would use as a comp is high maintenance because okay. that's a guy in uh a situation where he's delivering something that people need in his case mm. marijuana delivery to the people of new york and every episode is his encounter with different kinds of people who are and they're all different different walks of yeah. life and i love that about that show and so it's funny because as i and other filmmakers might have this experience too because people ask me oh is this a proof of concept and I said, it could work as a proof of concept, meaning something that somebody sees and then sees a larger, bigger project out of it. But also, I don't think anybody's paying money to see a block of shorts and watch my proof of concept. They're there to see a short film with a beginning yeah. and a middle and an end. And so that's Absolutely. what I made. But it 
with the post credit sequence that we have, I think uh, it points to a larger story without it without taking away from the fact that it's a whole and complete film by itself. But yeah, TV, I mean, I, I, I really uh, like TV that series is something that I've been asked about as well as feature. Well, I mean, I, and I think you have a hell of a point there, Eric, because I've been to several um, uh, contests or uh, theater runs and you sit there for the short blocks and you can see the really great short and then you see the proof of concept short. And it always is kind of, to me, it's a little cringy because give me a story. I want a story. And then if the story's worthy of a, of a full feature. Great. But if you're just out here pitching me your, you know, best take on something that's already been done. Um, I, I never, I never think it, I, I never think it really sells the way they want it to. Um, well, Eric, I want to say thanks again for coming on the show. Um, and actually, today is one of the deadlines for Script Summit, believe it or not. You being a Script Summiter, uh, today is actually the early bird deadline. But by the time this comes out, um, we will still be on a regular deadline so people could submit like yourself and um, and uh, get spotlighted like yourself as well because we're doing an In the Spotlight blog post on you, which is exciting. And is there anything you wanted to add? I just think... Uh... I tell people when they ask me how I how I came up with this or or anything, I just think I could sum up by saying, keep making stuff. Everybody out there, keep making the thing that you want to see and make the kind of thing where if you sat in a theater or you were sitting on your couch, it, you'd be entertained. Because that's all I think anybody is trying to do is entertain people. Yeah. And I think when you take that into consideration, it takes a lot of the pressure off. I love that. And and I love the note of making something that you want to see, because I will tell you, if it's something you want to see, somebody else is going to want to see it too. So, and I think that's awesome. So th there is an audience for this. Um, and, and I also want to thank you for being part of the Script Summit family, because um, it, it is pretty great to, to meet guys like you that have submitted to the contest and then seeing their stuff get made and seeing you get out there and watching everybody kind of grow. It's so awesome. So thanks again, Eric. Thank you. And thanks for watching the film. Jeffrey, I'll see you sometime in real life at some point. I'm sure. <laughs> being a great voice for uh, writers and filmmakers out there. It's appreciated. I I absolutely appreciate that. And when I meet you in real life, I'm going to hug the hell out of you. <laughs> Can't wait. All right. <laughs> See ya.